of gap for people, and uh, it always seems to be something that people want most, and, and they tend to show up for least. <laughs> they tend to into their schedule, I guess, right? Uh, so before I start, because this is going to be interactive, it's not just me yakking at you. Um, if I could get, I'm just writing down who's here. If I could get some of you, I don't care who, just give me an idea of what your current time and scheduling challenges are and what you expect to get out of today. Or this next hour. <laughs> the mindset to be able to commit to a specific time and nothing can interfere with it. Who else? Nobody? Okay, well then I'll just talk. Questions will come once we Absolutely, yes. The, the questions will, will come. So, uh, I have charts. I have copies of charts here. I have copies of charts here to hand out. But what I'm, I really want you guys to get... Keep the way here. No, no, you're not. No? Okay. Uh, it's really just the essence of this stuff because it doesn't matter what you use and what you use electronically. It all starts with the mindset because once you have that, it doesn't matter what your thing is because whatever you have, you just have to use it. And it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's paper or electronic. I'm kind of a little bit of both. I still like my paper, my everyday stuff. You know, I carry around my binder and I have my priority sheets in it, um, but I have Evernote to organize all my notes. I have Dropbox so I can have my files on different devices. I have my Google Calendar that's connected to my team. I just like my people. And when, you know, when I write, I like to actually write. So it really depends on you and you just have to figure out what's going to work for you and what you're going to use, what you can commit to. <laughs> Mike's question was kind of like the essence of, um, of the session because, I mean, time management is a process. I didn't just wake up one day and got organized, right? It's, it's learning, putting things into place, learning from those, learning where to adapt, and constantly working on it. You know, for me, fortunately, at this point, organization is a habit. And that's kind of, kind of that's what you want to get to. You want to get to a point where, it's not a chore. It's like I love sitting around and getting organized because if, if I didn't have to work, I'd just do that all the time because it's fun and I feel like a really good sense of accomplishment afterwards. Uh, but it takes a while because there's always something pulling you in any number of different directions and the challenge is to be committed to, you know, to do what you need to do. Right? All right. So, um, all this stuff I completely made up. It's my stuff. You can use as much or as little of it as you want. Uh, I think as long as you get uh, the the feel of what it is that you want to try and achieve, or what, what you want to achieve, um, then I've I've done my duty. Uh, so golden rules of time blocking, and the cliche is that you plan your work and work your plan, but that doesn't take into account your life. So. Especially lately when everybody's talking about balance and making sure that you do have that, that mix of, of business and family and personal, it's really important. I can send you all of this, you don't have to, the stuff, yeah, I can send you that. I mean, really, that's just for me to sort of know what to say next. Uh, and you don't know what I'm supposed to say. So, I can say stuff. <laughs> uh, so what we like to, to do uh, is call, uh, is, is, is organize the, the verbiage, uh, plan your life and then live your plan. Because it's no point being organized just in your work life if the rest of your family and your personal time suffers. You know, some of you need more organization and discipline in your work. Some of us need to work less <laughs> way more. So, but you know what, it, it doesn't matter what the challenge is, it's still a challenge, right? So for me now, as the kids are getting older, I just need to compartmentalize things a little bit so that I have more family time and more personal time. And the work will sort of come 
come after. Uh, if you don't plan your life, you'll have a plan for you. So if you don't have a schedule that you really want, want to follow, somebody will always get in your way, whether it's a client or a child or a parent or a neighbor or a colleague. You know, if you don't have your stuff really clear in your mind of what you need to do and how, how and when you need to do it, it's very easy to get distracted by somebody. I'm really looking forward to Tuesday when the kids go back to school because now that they're teenagers, the whole I'm working, please don't bother me until 12 sign on the door doesn't work because they knock. Because <laughs> the door is locked. They at least knock. That's good. They do while they've learned because I freak out on them when they don't knock. Right? So it's still an interruption. But whatever the interruption is, you know, if you're working in the office and you really need to get some work done, close your door working from home and you really get you need to work get some work done close your door I don't know maybe lock it <laughs> I'm considering you know what? I have a, a friend of mine she's a life coach and she figured out that when she was in the office even with a locked door people came in mm -hmm. although they're locked they just still came in and then one day she decided that she had she told everybody Every hour, on the full hour, for five or ten minutes, you can come in and ask me any questions during oh, that time. Oh, that's smart. And then, so they knew, okay, can it, is it really that important or can it wait 20 more minutes? Right. <coughs> anyway, that worked for her yeah. quite well. Uh, uh, there are often situations that they cannot wait. It, uh, but most things, most things, most things can. Yeah. You know, nothing, uh, you know, short of your child falling and bleeding or you know somebody having a heart attack in the middle of a showing something like most things can wait they can wait an hour mm -hmm. um, but we do we, we do tend in our, in our industry and I think in a lot of you know, just people's heads just get distracted and whatever it is that you're working on suffers so I, I put this together like ages and ages and ages ago before Gary Keller wrote the one thing who's read the one thing Sorry, right. yeah, few, okay. I managed to read it before my dog shoot the whole book up. <laughs> <laughs> You're done with it. Your homework. Uh, 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 actually, I actually took a picture because I thought he's trying to teach me something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> Probably to sit down and read and yeah. nothing else. Yeah, so, so you know, focus <coughs> and uh, not multitasking. Hi, Val, how are you? Glad you made it. Uh, it's something that needs, needs to be you know, really needs to be focused on because otherwise we're just all over the place. Uh, so just getting back to the plan, nothing is random. If you want to make it happen, if you want it to happen, you have to make it happen. So the, the, the saying of you predict your future by creating it. Right? If you see it and if you plan it and you put it out there, you have something to work towards so that you can essentially plan your future. And we are all really good at running around and making excuses about how busy we are. But it's easy to be busy. What you need to do is be doing the activities that make you productive, and, and that can often be very different. Yeah, absolutely. Plan your fun the way you plan your business, and you'll be more present when you're there. So, you know, getting back to me needing to be a little bit more focused on on the personal stuff. So we, uh, Philip and I, now plan our whole year in advance. We plan our holidays. Uh, we plan our. our Conferences. Oh my gosh! Sorry, I almost forgot that that word. Uh, so planning that out in advance, you you know, a what you have to look forward to, b what you have to do, and then it makes what you have to do a little bit easier because you have something to look forward to. So uh, when it's blocked, it's locked. That goes directly to your question, Mike. Right? Because it's so easy when you're getting distracted to have that take priority over what you're doing, and you can't have that because if if you do keep putting the important things off, then they're never going to get done at the expense of the things that maybe aren't quite as important. So, you know, getting back to your point, Claudia, looking at an interruption, you know, we all, we've heard about the whole multitasking myth and how long it takes you to get uh, back recentered to what you were working on if you're getting distracted. And uh, little successes leading to bigger successes. That just makes you, uh, or, or creates a sense of accomplishment. So when you've done something and you have been successful at it and you feel good about it, it makes it easier to keep going and, and do things again. Uh, Devel, I can send you all of this. Oh, yeah. I'd like to 
it, I feel like uh, as I write and I look, it makes me it makes me take it in. Perfect. Yeah. I find if I just sort of look at it later, I just won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, just just working on momentum. So it's it's really easy to get discouraged when nothing is happening, but then when something you know, right, Emma? For sure. Working, yeah. Working and working and working. And if you don't have that little bit of success to egg you on, it's really easy to stop what you're doing. Whereas if you do get to a point, whatever it is, whether it's lead generation or planning or, or time management, when you get to a point that you really feel like you've done something, it's easier to keep going. It's easier to actually uh, move on and keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Actually, Deval, before I go on, um, any specific questions or anything that you'd really like to get out of it? Today, anything that we could talk about that would help you? Maybe just how to stop being so distracted. But there's always, there's always, I mean, I try to turn my, my well, I can't turn my phone off, but, you know, I try to turn my, on my computer, turn the noise off that tells me my email has arrived. So I try to turn that off, so at least I'm on my laptop, I can try to get some work done. But I always have a million interruptions on my phone, and I'm like, ooh, look at Squirrel. <laughs> it is. It's, it's over there. It's so oh, the squirrel's over there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then how long does it take you to get back to what you're right. doing? Right. right, exactly. Have you read the one thing? Yeah, I have. It's really, really good. Yeah. And I tried to after I read the, the book, yeah. but then I stopped. <laughs> I think it all, it all goes back to really prioritizing and figuring out what's important to you. Because if you really do come up with that big why, even if it's a bunch of little whys, if, I, if you have something that's really important, it's a lot easier to concentrate on what you need to do to get there. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you don't have that goal, whether it's a big one or a small one, it's a lot easier to get distracted. And it, it takes practice. All of this thing, uh, all of this stuff really takes practice. So benefits, we know working with a purpose, figuring out your big why, what are you doing this all for? So I'm, you know, I was at a point for a very, very long time where I was just driven by numbers. And I would, like this was way before I was kids. Uh, and uh, I, I, I mean, I heard that that drove me because I wanted to do an extra five deals or an extra 10 deals or something like that. And if, you're, if you have a competitive spirit, competitive nature, and that drives you, then that's great. But for the most part, once we grow up and mature a little bit, we have goals that are a little bit more meaningful than that, than just numbers, right? So um, figuring out what you're doing it all for, really, uh, for me at least, and, and, and the people that I've talked to that have really absorbed this and um, become better at it, you have to have that drive, you have to figure out what you're doing it all for. Um, what's it going to look like when you get there? Right? If you have that vision too, it's easier. If you have the why, it's easier to figure out the how. Becoming more organized and focused, we've talked about multitasking obviously, if you do give something 100% of your focus, you'll be more efficient. We all know that, so how do you do it? How do you, how do you prevent that little email from, the email that pings distracting you, or that phone call, like what, what, what can you do? Leslie, you're like fresh into this. What was your industry before? I you used to do public relations. Ah, okay. Courage of fresh. Oh, cool. Cool. Fresh. It's like um, and in it's like blah blahs in house clothing. Yeah. And then before that, I used to be public relations in New York. Wow. <laughs> okay. So you want to do that? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So so yeah. There's this because we we're all raised on you know multitasking, getting more done. And it's only sort of the recent research that's gone back to well, no, don't because you can't chase two rabbits and, and catch them, right? It's better to go after the one. So what have you found in the past? Like you're coming into real estate a clean slate, yeah. right? <laughs> really fresh and ready. <laughs> really fresh. So so if, but you know, you work in an industry that's you know, obviously very, very active, very busy, and, yeah. and uh, potentially very distracting. So what would you say happened to you there and then that you might want to change now that your industry is different? Ooh, that I want to change? Behaviors, right? You're right. going to be in a different, like your promotion now is houses, yeah. but it's still relationships, right? Like you had to build relationships with the people that you were going to be working with. So we're still in relationship building, just yeah. houses. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I want to change, but one of my like mottos which really helped me while I was there was I always did the thing I least wanted to do first. 
Eat the frog. Yeah, because I just once frog, when I was out of the way, and whatever was the one thing I just like was cut putting off, yeah. I'd always do that first thing in the morning, and I found that always helped because then once that's done, like it's all easy after that. So what does Gary say is our most important job? What's the most important job? Lead generate. Thank you. Phew! No. <laughs> 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 <Go one. laughs> and why does uh, everyone in our company say lead generate first? First thing in the morning. Get it out of the way. Because it's the thing that's most important to us, and it's the thing that we like to do least and tend to do least. We'd rather work on flyers or our website or it's funny, it's more flyers in each generation. Passive. Okay. And you shouldn't be doing the flyers. You should have your men assistant or executive assistant or whoever it is in your marketing department, people with your flyers. You should be on the phone, face to face, door to door, right? right? That's where your strength is. We all have our 20%. Emma's a little, gonna be a little bit different because she's here to support you, right? So Emma's 80% is your 20%, right? David, you shouldn't be working with flyers. She should be. Yeah once you have your job description, <laughs> right? But no, you should, and, and if you do it first thing in the morning, uh, what is it in um, the one thing, willpower is not, all, is not on call, have you read the one thing? Yeah. Right, your willpower is strongest, in the morning. earliest in the day, earliest in the week. Oh. I thought also oh, after lunch, lunch. So a little bit, it goes I don't, up again. For me, no. <laughs> no, I don't think it's strongest in the morning. It's yeah. strongest in the morning, right? Because you're, you're, fresh, you're fresh, you're excited, <laughs> get your lead gen out of the way. So that's a good practice for you as you head in. Do all of your stuff, whatever it is you choose to do for your lead generation. Do it first thing, right? I mean, you don't have a lot of other stuff to do. So no. It's <laughs> exciting for you. Like, what else do I do? Just go talk to people. Yeah. yeah. If you talk to lots and lots of people in the industry. Or in this industry, if you talk to lots and lots of people, you'll be successful. It's that a lot of us hide. We hide behind the computer. We hide behind a lot of things so that we don't have to go out and talk to people. Where that's your main job. Go out and talk to people. Find somebody who, who wants to work with you, right? Or find somebody who finds somebody else that wants to work with you. Right? Um, we talked about success as feeling a, a sense of accomplishment, right? Because that's important. Uh, it can be, and you know, this business can be really lonely and it can be um, beyond tough. You know, that's why our turnover ratio is so high because it takes a big person with a big goal to just keep going. Like how many of us are on the Toronto State Real Estate Board now? 55,000? Right? Everybody knows somebody with a real estate license. Mm -hmm. okay, about 8,000 sales that everyone goes to the new program in this. Uh, why do you say that? Because uh, Tim Hudak was basically saying there was just such a rush of applicants because everyone knew it was going to go from Maria to uh, Humber. Mm -hmm. And so basically he was saying that now with everybody who signed up, if everybody who signed up passes, there'll be 8,000 of us. And <laughs> what about, what about well, the attrition rate? That, that would be just... Mm -hmm. Who knows, right? You look at those stats and say 50% of the agents don't even do a deal in a year, right? Yeah, probably more so than that at this point. That's the attrition uh, rate right there. Well, right. We, we Well, not all of them leave. So, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I haven't looked at the stats recently, but a number of years ago, 87% of the realtors that are here today will not be here in three years. That was a while back. Um, oh, I, would, I would imagine it's probably higher than that now just because of the number of people. Mm. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's still it's still a lot of people and a lot of people vying for the same business. Right? So you got to find them, yeah. find them, and uh, figure help them figure out why they should be doing business with people over anybody else. Okay? I know we all, all us good ones make it look easy. <laughs> it can't you know it can't it's simple it's simple it's just not easy. The simplicity is be good at what you do and just talk to lots of people. Right? But there's a lot more to it. It's a lot more complicated than that when you get down to the everyday stuff. Uh, so life and business plan. So we, and this isn't business planning clinic, but business planning is coming up. We're going to have courses sometime around November, December. I would highly encourage all of you to take one. It doesn't matter which one, usually. 
Um, we will have something big regionally coming up. We usually do at the end of November or early December. Um, in the past, it's been Gene Rivers that's come up, and he is fantastic. But anything that's sort of bigger that's brought up, you really should should take take the course. Um, it's not all sort of numbers and, and you know appointments and conversions, but it really helps you to form the big picture. Uh, so as I had mentioned, we uh, we start with our annual business plan. So we figure out how many units we want to do, uh, what the volume is that we're going to uh, aim for based on our average price, um, how the team structure is going to work. So so obviously a business plan is going to look different for me than for you, Mike, right? Um, or for you just starting out. For you, you just want to get that. Uh, so I create, after we do that, I create an annual 12-month at a glance uh, one-pager, and I'll go over this with you. Oh, I also don't want you guys to get freaked out with my colors, right? Because um, I, I have everything color-coordinated, and if you just look at it, like, from where you sit, you, you might go into overwhelm. I don't want you to do that, so yeah, just think back, yeah, think, of, think of the essence of this, and and take what I say that I do and figure out what you can do to make sure that it works for you. Because all of this stuff is so personal, right? And everybody's going to be motivated by different things and everybody's going to be work, everybody's going to work differently. So you've got to figure out what's going to work for you and what you're going to do, right? There's no point committing to a program if you're not going to stick to it. So from 12 months at a glance, I break it down to monthly 411s. Who is, who's using a 411 here? What's a 411? 411 is four weeks, one month, one year. So when we go from, and I'll, I'll look at these up with you guys individually, when we go from 12 month at a glance, we figure out what we want to do in one month, and then make sure we concentrate on that stuff before we move on to something else. And um, when, we, when we get into that, I'll, I'll uh, show you how uh, it should work so that you don't start something else before you finish what you're that's a challenge too. Sometimes we start projects and then something else gets our attention and all of a sudden we're over there and then you know, a few weeks or months later it's something else and then three months later you realize you didn't finish what you started over here because you got so excited about something else. Right? And then uh, now weekly color coded chart. Uh, this was before we had Google Calendar. <laughs> so I actually didn't bring you guys a copy of that because it was even more overwhelming in its colors. I'll show you my Google Calendar, um, which I put together for me, and then each one of our team members has their own color. So it'll still have lots of colors, but I'll, I'll break it down so you just see my activities. And then uh, daily priority charts. So uh, the, the binder that I had showed you, I'm, I'll, I'll go through the daily pages with you. Um, just so you can see, like, like sometimes that's all it takes is a page with different columns. <laughs> like, honestly, what I need to get done today, what I need to get done this week, and what I hope to get done Sunday. Right? And you can't let the this week and the Sunday take over for today. So you have to make sure that what you put on your today list really needs to be done today. And sometimes it takes you a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds just to figure out where does that go? Does it really have to be done today or could it be done um, this week or sometime, right? And and if you do, it's kind of like you have to slow down to speed up, right? Because if you take a little bit of time up front with whatever up front is, whether it's planning your year, your month, your week, or your day, you take that little bit of time up front, it'll help you figure out what's really important so that you can concentrate on it and not get distracted. Okay, so annual, okay, sorry, anybody? Jump in anytime. I, I yes. Find for me, a, a challenge is that I have so many things on my list, or even if it's one thing I know I have to get done, usually it takes me longer than I think. Than I think, and then I sort of then I'm disappointed and frustrated because I didn't finish it in that time, or I was running out of time before I had to go out and do something else. So. Well, the next something else is it as important as what you were doing? I know if it's an appointment, let's say, I'm not just a doctor's appointment, let's say, maybe I started them too late. Maybe I got distracted before. 
I can tell you that most things usually take longer to do than you think they will, and they're typically more involved than you think they will be at the beginning. So when we get to the monthly 411s, I'll kind of I'll break it down for you a little bit, so that the next time you start something, if you plan twice as much time as mm -hmm. you think it's going to take, you might be in a better position because mm -hmm. then you won't be um, you won't be inclined to chop it, mm -hmm. right? But ultimately, when you say you get frustrated that it's taking you longer, but it, is it important? No, at the moment, I'm not frustrated. It's only when I realize I can't finish it or mm -hmm. I just don't have the time to, because there are all the other things I have to get done. If you get everything out on paper, you'll be, you'll be able better to prioritize. So my Friday list, it's, you guys saw it, <laughs> it's such a mess because I always make a list of everything that I need to do. But before I start on anything, I prioritize it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, you know, again, taking time up front. What's going to take, what's going to be most important. Mm -hmm. And if, if I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. And you can just work on one thing. Mm -hmm. And then rather than getting frustrated that you didn't finish it before you have to start thing number two, mm -hmm. it was what, number one really important to finish, mm -hmm. it was just work on it. Yeah. Right? Because then you're going to get back to that. If, if you keep stopping what you're doing to start something else, mm -hmm. you're not going to have those successes. You're just going to have, you're going to keep getting these frustrations. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you spend a little bit more time and do it, you're like, oh, I did it. Hey. Mm -hmm. I can do it. I can finish something. Okay, that's you know what finishing something. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Like yeah. you're like, oh man, I'm finished. Do you know what? <laughs> it's, it's been so long since I've ever finished my to-do list. It was our, <laughs> our <laughs> but you know, like the thing, like I just keep moving things and I move them on to the next week or the next month or whatever. Uh, but it was our our trip with Philip to Miami in July. Uh, we were leaving, I think, was that what it was? I think, whatever, it was a trip. We were going on a trip, and we were leaving on Sunday, and uh, Saturday afternoon, I'm looking, I'm going, oh, wow, I'm like getting to the bottom of this. Oh, I still have a few things to do. And it was like Sunday morning by 9 o'clock, I finished everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my god. Did you that always feels like, like got extra time. <laughs> no, I said I can go on vacation and not worry about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. Listen, I'm not perfect. As organized as I am, I'd still vex. Like, I'll still get up at 3 o'clock in the morning <gasps> once and, like, think about my to do list <laughs> once in a while. Right? But yeah, it, it feels really good to finish stuff. I still had like next month what I was going to do, but like my, my to do, my to do before leaving on vacation was it was finished. I almost had it. The most said that. Uh, <laughs> so that was all the way. Uh, okay, so annual plans. So we've got our, our three components, family, uh, business, sales, and professional training. Uh, so uh, what I had mentioned was we always plan our holidays first because a, that gives us something to look forward to, and B, we kind of have to plan around it. So we try not to have you know, too many listings going on while we're actually gone. Uh, the uh, business sales, uh, so uh, you know, your, your uh, unit number, volume number, whatever, and if you, know, if you don't have a history yet on, on what you can base that on, you know, make it up. Like, do, you have, do you know what you'd like to do in your first year in the business? No, I'm sort of just formulating all yeah. my plans right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so whatever whatever that is for you, and um, it's you know who, who's who's got a semblance of a business plan? I've got a business plan. Yeah. yeah. I do it every year. At the end of like. In December. Yeah. Actually, I guess January. In the that's December January time period between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Around the beginning of January. Actually, yeah. Around there, that's kind of when I work on my business plan every year. Mm -hmm. That way, I kind of go through everything I made. You know, figure out exactly where each piece of business came from. That's great. That's and then a, I put it all into an Excel spreadsheet, <coughs> and then I run little pie charts, so I can see what percentage of my business came from referrals or open houses yep. or whatever else. So I know what's working, what's not working. Do you only do that at the end of the year? Yes. Have you ever like tracked it throughout the year? Oh, I just I wouldn't have the time. I just I only do it at the end of the year because. Uh, 
Oh, by the way, command, guys, is it's going to be a life changer. So command takes your database, right? And then everything else that we're doing in Excel and Publisher and Word and Canva and Bomb Bomb, and like, it's going to have everything all in one spot. A bit of a learning curve. But once it's done, it's, it's going to be out of this world. So right now it's an Excel chart. It's really simple. Just address, uh, whether it's a listing or a buy, so we can easily count them, mm -hmm. and then the source, yeah. so we've got all the things across the top. Uh, how long it took us to get that business? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So was it a week, a month, or 25 years? Yeah. Right? That's very interesting. I did. We had one this year. It was 25 years. Um, and then the, uh, it doesn't take you. <laughs> I started when I was 12, okay? Um, then the dollar volume and uh, the deal number. So, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a, a formula, right? So, you just keep every time you put the deal amount, there's a formula that adds it to the last one. So, you always have a running tally. God, it's basically every single time you're doing it. Every single time you're, you're doing it. it into every system. time the deal is so, firm, you right. just put it on there. Right. And that's in command under... It will be, uh, so, don't listen to my verbiage because I, I'm not as well it's versed in it. It's, right now it's opportunities, they're changing that to sales pipeline mm -hmm. because what, it's, what command will do is take your contact from the initial lead to an appointment, to the contract, mm -hmm. to the closing, and then after closing. So within the whole, within that, that funnel, within that line of business, mm -hmm. it's going to take that one person or that one family from when you first meet them to the very end to after they close and then you start your after closing program. So um, right now we have, like we track our deals, we track our appointments so we can figure out conversion. How long did it take us to get an appointment? Right? Was it a week, a month, or 20 years? Um, and then did that, did that appointment uh, turn into a contract? Right, so we've got all of these charts that track this stuff, and every time something happens, we have to go to a different chart and put it on that chart. And then, <laughs> who's doing the training next week? Okay. What training? What training? Man. Man. Oh, oh yeah, I want to do that. Uh, what is it? Agents, uh, it, you you should. Yeah. You should for sure. Agents are Tuesday. Teams, teams are Wednesday. Wednesday and, combined. And, and combined is Thursday. Here? Uh, no. Oh. No, no, no. Ask Andy. It's, okay. um, when we one. when we did it, it was at the Mississauga office. Same place. Barry and is it the same place? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jill, Jill, and Bo. Mm -hmm. Jill is our tech director. Yes, we are right. the only region in Keller Williams that has its own technical director. That was because we asked for it. Said, Come on, on. don't forget about us Canadians. Uh, so Jill is awesome because he just knows so much uh, behind the scenes and he is just a command whiz. And then Bo is kind of like his human sidekick and uh, she takes the technical aspect of what he's talking about and she puts it into practical terms. Uh, if, I, I don't think that particular training is open, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but it's, oh, it's an incredible program. Um, anyway, I'll, for now, I'll just send you the uh, deal tracking chart, because that's, yeah, that'll be good. It sounds easy enough to do on an Excel spreadsheet, and my Excel already kind of has a lot of those things on it. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Because that's what I'm using to track my deals at the end of the year. But yeah, I'm sort of breaking down my business between, like, singles, couples, male, female, condos, houses. What neighborhoods, um, all that stuff. Yeah, we also use it to figure out where we shouldn't be spending money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys for, exactly. sure, for sure figure out where your business is coming from. Um, once you have, you know, once you have some business under your belt, to actually figure out where it's coming from. Because we, I mean, we cut newspaper ads years ago, and this year we actually cut the community newspapers. We used to do the Guardian and the Villager, and, and those little cut them. Wait, the um, ones, they don't deliver them anyway. Uh, well, no. no. I have got the Guardian for months. That's interesting. 
I haven't either. It's funny because the way I think about those you can phone the distribution is that specifically sent to you for someone to yeah. get that paper in their box. Is that a place that might see your eyes? It's a lot more difficult than you just sending a flyer directly to them. Mm -hmm. They just click the flyer, they just get that right away. Whoever it is. They don't have to yeah. find your ask in the newspaper. I think that's why I decided to not to know what it's all about. Yeah, we uh, we were finding there was people showing up to our open houses mm -hmm. that you know either read the Guardian or the Villager or something like that. So we always ask, you know, what is you your yeah, open house? Oh, actually, I saw you in the Guardian. Great. Mm -hmm. We could not track one piece of business to that though. Mm -hmm. So it was bringing people, and it was the only newspaper that we kept because I kept saying, but people are coming to the open house. They're coming to the open house. They're coming to the open house. They were, but zero business. But you send flyers out in your name and sell too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the newspapers, I mean, we're looking at about a thousand bucks a month. Yeah, well, that's Right? Because a lot of the, people more are more on the realtor.ca now, yeah. tracking mm -hmm. or on the Google one. There's a Google. Oh, there, there's every <laughs> posted looking at the papers. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, where are we? Business goals, professional training. You know, that's something that, that you guys should really uh, keep in mind to have in your annual plan, which training are you going to go to, you know, for the newer agents, definitely thinking of coming to family reunion. Did you come last year? Uh, I was there okay. two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Did you come to Dallas? For the family reunion? Family reunion? I wanted to go to Megan Camp. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a good one. I did. Oh, that's one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I went to family reunion when we were at Advantage. Yes. When we were at Yes. Know each other then. She just was fresh. Oh, no, enjoying it though. Just no. Yes. Oh. Luring her. Luring. Her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, outside outside of just Keller Williams courses, you know, what is their trap? What is their uh, th that you need to help you figure out? You know, buyers versus sellers. You can be buyer focused or seller focused. If you're buyer focused, you want to be more seller focused. You need more training on listings. So, so scope that out and as much as possible plan that in advance because it's really easy to, to sweep training under the rug, right? When you get busy. She needs it, right? October. Yeah. Yes, promise. Either at the beginning or the middle, I don't know yet, yeah. but for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I know, look at the pretty color. So, uh, red is work, lead gen. Yellow is time off. Green is learning. Um, oh, this was last year. I'm like, what did I do for two weeks? I got my broker's course. Right. So I had plan I had planned to do that. So uh, we usually do our planning sort of in November. Um, we like to do our plan before there's a big business planning clinic. Um, so I knew already at the end of 2017 that I was going to do my broker course. I was already signed up, so I, I knew that then. But you know, we've got family reunion here. We've got the luxury retreat here, which I never miss. There was the broker course. There's mega camp. Um, this year, I wanted to do the leaders and luxury course in November, but there's too much other stuff going on, um, so that didn't didn't go there. But. Um, you see this like big blotch of yellow? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's December. That's December. <laughs> so for me, time off is no appointments or no lead generating. So I might still be working on the office on stuff, but I don't really consider that work, right? Uh, purple is work and admin. Sometimes I will schedule like a couple of days of just working on the business. I do that on Fridays as well, but. At the beginning of December, that's when I like to really book the plan for marketing and things that we're going to do from January to December of the following year. Uh, but what I started to do is for the balance of December up until the 27th, I don't have appointments, I don't sit on the phone, I don't do anything. I'm, I might have some client visits, like I'll do people drop in lunches and stuff, but that's kind of like my time to put my brain on hold. Um, because I do, I mean, I, I've, lead generation for me is now a habit, so it's not one of the chores that everybody else is trying to put into their schedule, right? So for me, a day without lead generating is a day off. Uh, but what I do every year, and I've done this now for probably the last 10 years, is from the 27th to either the 30th or the 30th, or the morning of the 31st, depending on how the days fall, that's my call marathon. What? So, call marathon. Call marathon. Oh. 
So I will sit on the phone from six to eight hours Ooh. all day. Wow. Every day. That's why I need the time off before. Yeah. <laughs> Rest your boys. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, one year I got sick. Oh. I got sick mm -hmm. on uh, Christmas Day. Uh, I went to bed Christmas Day in the evening, whatever, like 8 o'clock, and I woke up on the 27th. Because oh in God. between, <clears throat> I was comatose. I don't know what I had. I thought, like, for sure I was going to die. Like, sure. I thought this camp, it was just the flu, but I thought I was going to die. I thought I had to go to emergency. Anyway, so I was feeling a little bit better, and I, I got about a day of calling in, and then I lost my voice. I didn't just go hoarse, I lost my voice <laughs> completely. Couldn't talk, we were going to Mexico on the 2nd of January. Oh. I spent a week, and the kids were like really young then, I spent a week going, Psst. <laughs> it was hysterical. Awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So um, your call marathon uh, over between Christmas and New Year's, what do you say? Happy it's New Year's? it's follow it's follow up calls. So past clients I have scheduled throughout the year. We have events, we have get togethers. So so that's not my past client calling. Uh, that is my, I might move in the spring, I might move next year, I might, might do something. So it's all my follow-ups. And the reason it takes me that long is I've got probably about you know, seven or 800 people yeah. in that nurtures database. So it's a good time to get a hold of them, uh, who have just gotten through Christmas. Uh, everybody's in a pretty decent mood, a lot of people are home. Um, the flip side to that is there's some people that aren't so happy, you know, they might be lonely and, you know, it's a good time to just give, like, some of our seniors, you know, a little bit of, of a perk, right? So it kind of does dual purpose. But it's the time where people realize they're getting a divorce, too. It's like <laughs> this week right now. Yeah, oh yeah? Yeah, well, because the, the family lawyers basically, they're off, their phones get busy in September and January. Because it's like the time of renewal, it's when people make big decisions, right? And so after people have gone through summer vacation, they're like, okay, we're done. And same yeah. thing, get through Christmas. I think get, get through get Christmas. Christmas, that's yeah. a biggie, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So quick question, I mean, so are you, um, so the people that you're calling on this call marathon, yes. they've been on uh, like a drip campaign? Yes. So there's been communication with contact. Okay. It can be, and, and lots, lots, lots of right this year. Okay. You know, some people, maybe they only get one other call a year. Maybe they're not moving for two to three years. I mean, I, I, I put people on a call rotation. As long as they know that they're moving, I will put them into a call rotation. Okay. You know, maybe it's only once a year. Maybe it's twice a year. Some is every other month. Right? It's, it just depends on either what they said their urgency is or what I have made up their urgency is. <laughs> right, and then I'm looking to see is, is it going to be longer than that or shorter than that. Because right. when people say I want to move in the spring, you don't wait till spring to call them, right? Because mm -hmm. right? they've made all their plans by then. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, so so it's interesting because I I've kind of kept moving this big call block back because I used to, you know, people want to move in the spring, I'll call them in March. Oh, that's too late, right? Sometimes either they've already made their decision on what they're going to do. Or sometimes they've already moved. But you said, <laughs> you said spring, right? So whenever somebody says, uh, gives me a date, I always chop it in half. So if they say I'm moving in a year, um, I'll, I'll make a note to say said move in a year. So make sure you, you, you chop that into six months. And sometimes it's even faster than that. And sometimes people don't know, right? It's not like they're lying to you. They just think they, they're going to move at some point then. But you can say to them, well, if I could show you how moving your plans up could actually help you sell your house for more money, would you be willing to listen to that? Hello, popcorn girl. <laughs> um, right? So it's all, it's all about... Yeah. Okay. How, how much popcorn have you guys eaten oh my in this God. office? So Wait, I love popcorn, don't worry. Okay. I wasn't here always, yesterday. It's always <laughs> popping. <laughs> Um, That's me, sorry. Uh, I think, okay. Kind of got off a little bit of a you guys, you guys get the gist, right? Okay, so monthly, this is where you get into your 411. So I have, can somebody figure out how to turn off their sound? No, it's me. Just turn my thing off, sorry. It's the orange girl. My apologies. Uh, oh, okay, so just before. Or we get into all of all, all of the monthlies. So 
four one ones. We've got them in one format. They're on MyKW. Uh, this is just it's so simple. It's in Word. And um, I I like this. I like paper. I'll pass this around. Um, just just sort of look. Just one sheet of paper. So you have your annual goals written at the top and then monthly goals for that month. I also added uh, my team goals because then I figure out what I want to get accomplished and what the team needs to do. And then four weeks, right? So you've got four, one, one. The reason the weeks are helpful is so that you can break down, uh, so that you can break down what you need to do. Now, for you starting out and for, for other people who need a little bit more discipline, they put a hundred contacts in every week, two appointments, whatever the number is, 50 contacts. They put that in there so that you always have that in front of your face. I don't need to do that anymore because for me it's been internalized and it's a habit. So I don't put those numbers on here. I put our annual goals and then all of the annual things that I want to accomplish. I also cut my work time down uh, last year to 38 weeks, accounting for vacations and then, you know, mega camp is a week, training mm -hmm. reunions a week, all the training like that. Um, plus, our goal has been to travel more. So, <laughs> this summer we did. I'm so excited. Can't wait for more. Um, so, again, this is really simple. Uh, if you only want to be online, there is an online version on my KW. And um, it, 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 it moves along with you. So for me, I like paper because at the end of the month I can mark off what I did and what I didn't do, I'm just gonna move on to the next month. You have that ability to do it online as well. It just depends on what's gonna work best for you. So um, getting to projects, right? So I like to plan one big project for a month. So in this particular one, uh, that was January. So in January, uh, we were making plans for our February Family Day skating party. We've done that 10 years in a row now. Um, we're going to move away from Family Day. Because it always conflicts with family reunion. Um, uh, so we're going to have a, a skating party in January, as long as we can figure out our, um, our schedule based on the, the hockey ranks. So whatever we're doing, whether it's a party or an event for next month, we plan all of the touches and all of the calls the previous month. So I, so I mean, the, the project could be like, what? it's an event, or the skating, or? Whatever, whatever you want to do, maybe it's work on your website. Okay, so, right? Bring so, your kitchen. <laughs> well, that goes, down, that goes down up here, oh, personal okay. goals. Well, okay. I, separate, <laughs> I separate business from personal because for me it's easier to keep that, you know, just keep focused mm -hmm. on one thing over the other. But whatever, the, going back to the annual plan, if you make your annual plan of the projects you want to achieve, then you figure out what do you want to do first. There's the, where the prioritization comes in, right? So whether it's website or party or networking group or whatever it is that you want to do, you need to plan for it. Mm -hmm. So if you figure out everything you want to do and then figure out what you want to do when mm -hmm. and then put that on to your monthly, um, monthly 401 as a goal, something might take you more than a month, mm -hmm. right? But the thing is, if you put it on your January list, and by end of January you haven't finished it, don't put something else onto your February list. Move, right? Mm -hmm. That's why for me, having the paper mm -hmm. is really helpful because then I can sit and, oh, we really didn't finish that, right? So let's make sure that the next month we don't start something until we finish this. And then for the team, too, it helps for them to have their to-dos so that they don't do the same thing, right? Like everybody has to be focused on, on what their role is in each project or event so that, I mean, if it's an event, it's easy because there's a happening to an event. But if it's a project, whether it's website or, you know, work on your testimonials or whatever it is, it's easy not to finish that because, like, there's no, there's no end to it. Right? Mm -hmm. Whereas an event, I mean, you have a date, mm -hmm. right? So you know that it has to go down before that, that, uh, that date. And then for the weeks, this helps me now because I have big groups of people that I want to call. 
So for me, in these columns, I'll say, okay, uh, sphere A to D, E to J, whatever. So it helps me organize that. Um, HST remittance, yeah. payroll remittance, right? Like in order for me to do my HST, which I really should be farming out, I just haven't figured out how to do it. Um, Bridget has to have done the quarterly expenses. In order for her to do the quarterly expenses, she should have done the monthly expenses. So all of that has to be broken down. So, if, you know, uh, April, so yeah, so April, Q1 HST is due, right? So in order for Q1 HST to be remitted, the expenses have to be done. So when are they going to be done? When am I going to review them? When am I going to submit it? Right? And I'm just breaking that down. It's all about eating the elephant, right? How do you eat an elephant? Anybody? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. <laughs> right? So if you have a little bit that you're concentrating on, it's a lot easier to get it done. Speaking of getting done, I promised you guys it'd be an hour. And uh, we're a little bit beyond that. So let me, uh, let me get to the weekly. Because that helps. That helps with the, when do I do it all? See, this is what it used to look like. <laughs> This is this is all. This is uh, this is actually still from Advantage L. <laughs> yes, I haven't updated that. But but you know, for for me doing that initially, that really helped me um, focus on chunks of things that I wanted to do. So you know, get up, go to the gym, uh, lead generation. Lead generation has always been read, um, and then that and that that's how I started first, just to get my mind into thinking of what am what am I doing when. Right? You figure out what it, like I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, not everybody's going to do that, right? So figure out what, your, what you want your schedule to look like. And with Google Calendar, it's so easy. So I'm just going to turn everybody else's off. So the, because I'm, I'm blue, right? Okay, so here's a regular week. Let me turn everybody else off. Okay, so those are the things that I do every single week. So I have my, you know, keep in mind that's Labor Day. So I've got my lead generating time in the morning. When I door knock, I door knock sort of 4.30 to 6, so that's already in my calendar. If I know it's raining, I'm going to take that from one day and I'm going to put it somewhere else. If you erase, you must replace the important <laughs> things. If you really, really, really have to interrupt what you're doing or, or, or reschedule what you're doing, just put it somewhere else. Don't just take it out because then you're never going to get it done. Mm. And you join up with a partner, right? You have by yourself. I don't know myself. Oh, you do? Oh, no, 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 no. I have. You're in E1, E2, E3, though, right? W8, W2, W1, oh, W6. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Central, where I have. I have stuff. We've got one in Richmond Hill coming up. In the middle of September. Wow. Yeah, because we do neighbor wine and cheese, and it's really nice face to face. Got it. Right? Yeah. 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 So all of that is there, so that if a client calls and says, um, oh, you know, I want to meet at like 5 o'clock on Thursday, you say, no, I'm booked at that time. Can we meet at 6 30? Are all your lead generation in the morning, is that all calls? Yes. Okay. For me. Cold calls, or just no, like I don't cold call anymore. Okay. Actually, I never did, really. <laughs> my first first month in real estate. Uh, no, typically this is either me calling past clients for referrals or doing that follow up. The are you moving? 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 Um, I find for me, especially because some people I call at work, right? So they're there, and then the door knocking I do. Um, so this is actually this is a very light calendar. Usually I have my dinner time planned and booked, um, and this just helps me visual. Visualize and, and keep my own brain organized, right? Because otherwise it's it's hard to do. It's really easy for somebody to get into your schedule if you don't have a schedule, right? If it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. Who's done bold? David? Yeah. Anybody else? Right? It's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. And don't think you're going to remember because you won't. Do you find when you're door knocking from 4 to 6, that's the most success in terms of when people are home, or do you just do it because that's when you get them in? Uh, the former. 
I still don't want to door knock at dinner time. Right. Have you had dinner? No, you usually do. Does it say yeah. five to six? Yeah, it's it's because when I get more people at home. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then it leaves uh, it leaves time for appointments afterwards. Okay. Most people also don't eat at five. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a better way for me to get in touch with more people. Yeah. When do you eat dinner? What time? Uh, usually Seven. usually by like. Well, four thirty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then I don't eat until the morning. I'm yeah, I'm on a. But your whole family eats at this time. Sometimes I, I I don't door knock three days a week or oh, something. Okay. Right, um, right, like, right now when the weather is nice, I want to take advantage of it. Uh, but no, I'm not door knocking at five o'clock on a January fifteenth. Yeah, I was gonna say it's pretty dark. Yeah, pretty darn dark that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm a fair weather door knocker. Uh, about minus ten. To about plus 30. Actually, that's not true. I was door knocking in 35 degrees. Hey, we've had more 35. We have. Yeah, 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 we have. But then I just pretend that I'm on the beach. <laughs> and I'm eating things on me. It's like, ah. Oh, <laughs> and how many doors are you doing? Uh, I aim for 50. 50. I aim, aim, aim for 50. 50 yeah. per day. 50. Yes. Zero. In the farm, it's usually more like 20, 25 to 30 because. Yeah. It's usually more like 25 to 30 because yeah. I know so many people there. Um, I'm usually talking a little bit more. The, the discussions are a little bit longer just because people know me more. Um, Is that all I wanted to say about a week? Does this make any sense? So, Mike had a question about how not to get distracted and how to uh, organize your mindset. It all starts with mindset. Like, that's the basis of all this stuff, right? Because if you don't have it clear in your head, you're never going to do this. You're never going to, you're never going to get it. You just have to figure out why you're doing it, what's most important for you, and um, the how-to is typically a little bit easier because if you're really driven to a result, you're going to do what you need to do to get there. And so, you only do the agent open houses, which is that was talking about agent open houses you're going to, yeah. and the ones that you're throwing through those days. Yeah. Which you're going to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. First one. Um, so priority sheets, real quick. Again, I like paper because I like writing and I like crossing things off. Um, and the stuff that's not crossed off gets on the next day. So I have a different one for almost each day. And I say almost because um, the Monday sheet is a little bit, oh, I'll just I'll pass it around. The Monday sheet is a little bit more involved because that's when we have our team meetings. And there's more stuff to discuss. So what transactions have we had? What are the uh, updates for our current customers? What do we have coming up with listings and buyers that we need to think about? What are we planning for? And what are the week's appointments? So that one's a little bit more involved. Uh, our admin also writes down all the week's birthdays. So that I want to know in the car. Clients. Clients' birthdays. Yeah. Oh, they're all dead. So when you're the perfect. Yeah, so I have that. You know, I just have the line on my. They'll call them on their birthday? Yeah. Hey, happy birthday. How you doing? Happy birthday. Nobody else called you. Nobody sends you a Facebook message, right? Yeah, so we send cards. We do this, the send out cards for birthdays, and then I call on the day. Um, Tuesday and thir Tuesday through Thursday, they're all pretty similar. There's not a ton of different stuff that goes on. Um, but I started doing things like on Tuesdays, make sure to follow up with the pipeline. I think you know all this stuff already, David. Eh? Yeah, got a good one. You were just talking about the send out card. So yes. you use that service? Yes. And so what else do you send out? You send so out so we, have, we have birthday cards, anniversary cards for the first three years after client moves in. Uh, we've started to do the big group sends, so we're doing, so we did Valentine's card in February. Um, in April, we did Happy Spring. We did Mother's Day and Father's Day in May and June. In July, we did the ice cream, ice cream card, uh, National Ice Cream Day. Uh, so those, we actually, we sent out quite a bit. I think we sent out over 500 of those. Uh, we did the July 21st is National Ice Cream Day, just like Chip, Chip taught us. Um, free ice cream with every listing appointment in you know, July, August. Uh, so, so that was a little bit labor intensive because uh, I actually picked 
that wasn't for past clients, that was more to generate potential appointments. So that was a little bit more labor intensive because I had to go through our list of prospects and figure out who I wanted to send it to. So it was it was a little bit more work. It wasn't a mass thing that you did. That's right. And then you're doing Christmas? Haven't done that yet. Oh, really? Uh, because, we, because we usually do calendars. So we're actually just getting to the point where, oh, like, calendars. Like old school printing. Old calendars. school printing <laughs> calendars. People wow. like yeah. Why do people like them no longer? They, they do. Some people not say, don't, people. don't ever send me paper. I'm not going to do anything with it. Please save your trees. Uh, other people are like, oh, I know. And what do you put just houses? Like because I Oh we just I get it through through Conda or Teldon. We just like do nice interiors. I stopped doing recipes because that was a little bit cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> but but we're just reviewing that whole program to Bell because they're not that expensive. They're only about a dollar, dollar twenty. No 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 the calendars. We oh, have okay. calendars. Um, but it's the it's the postage. Course, right, we're at like over three dollars each now. Um, I use them for door knocking too. So in the farm and some past clients, I was using them as drop bys. Last year, I delivered I think about three hundred and twenty over November. But and that's that's not like going door to door. That's going to that door and that door and that door when I know someone. So so yeah, we're just reviewing all of that. Uh, my husband's convinced that the calendars don't do anything unless of course somebody calls and says oh I got your calendar I remember I want to talk to you and it also gives me a chance to go to the door right so we're we're just trying to figure out what to do with that yeah, I don't know how you do it I uh, I mean I said organize it, it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just going out to drop stuff off like I just feel like I never have enough time to go to people's houses to do like to do the drop flies. Right. So for me for Christmas I send out cookies. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do it. I have a company that does it. But they're shortbread cookies and people text me, call me, oh my God, thanks so much for the cookies. We love these. Right. They're made with cloud shortbread cookies. There's not a soul that does not eat these cookies. They love them. Right? <laughs> but does it yeah. send out yeah. cards do that too? They, they uh, yes, they have got brownies too. Yeah, but you're talking, you're talking about personalized and... Well, they're not personalized. I mean, I, there's a little card that everybody gets, but I send this company an Excel spreadsheet and they just deliver it all. And how many are on that list? A lot. Um, I can't remember, but a lot. Is this like past clients many, or prospects too? Past clients. Yeah, it's all that's because it's so expensive. Basically, it's all past clients. But and a couple you could of go to some every year. Yeah, that's a good go idea. Go to it, and then it's a good just idea. need another sheet. Yeah, Excel sheet to figure out. So it's past of, clients and people who refer me right, a lot of business. Right. So that's yeah, past client on the list. That's what that's what yeah. we focus on as well. So for us, that list right now is 570. Yeah. Um, so our party that we're having on September the seventh, uh, we we send it. Email invites, the people who don't have email, we send hard copy invites and we call everybody. Wow. So that's, yeah, and it's also, it's a good touch for me. Yeah. Hey, you're going to come to the party, I haven't talked to you in six months. All right, so that, that works out really well. Um, right. But we're, we're also going to be doing more micro events, like smaller events, mm -hmm. where it's going to be like, more targeted, yeah, like 50 people, right. rather than 500. Yeah. Right, so I'm just working Five on that. 500 your house? Uh, uh, well, the the client parties at our house. I don't think I want to go too many parties at my house. Five hundred. <laughs> five hundred. Five hundred. Well, they don't. They, five hundred don't show up. We should have about a hundred, and, yeah. and it's a drop in. Like it's yeah. not like a come sit down oh, and eat. It's open house. Yeah. 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 I yeah. do parties at my house. That's what I do. Yeah. I just invite everyone to my house, but uh, yeah. Just keep always trying to rethink what. Well, and should and, be done. and 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 the bigger. The real estate population gets the more technology we have, the more everybody's bombarded from every single direction, whether it's a flyer, an email, or whatever. I think the more the face-to-face, -face, you know, belly-to-belly -belly personal interaction mm -hmm. uh, is is going to make a difference. Going retro. For one of the touches you were talking about the ice cream thing, there's actually a website called National Calendar Day or something like that, and every day, every day is you get an thing. email yeah. that there's something, right? Like, and that's Yesterday such a was great dog day. Yeah. Yesterday yeah. was Happy Day, yeah. right? Yeah. Or two days ago. Yeah. yeah. Lots of people were posting on Facebook. Yep. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it's just it's there's finding such an odd. It's finding what you want to do and then plugging it all in. Yeah. That's why the annual calendar makes such a difference. Is is there's so much to do. Small party, big party, dog day, ice cream day. Like yeah. there's so much. You yeah. really, you can't do it all. 
and you shouldn't do it all. You need to figure out what are you going to concentrate on. So, so having that organization, maybe you do it once at the end of a year. Maybe you do it mid-year. Maybe you do it June as well, just to review things. Because you can't do too much. And you find that send out cards works well, as opposed to doing it yourself. You just decided that this thing works. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. Uh, How long have you been doing it for? We've been using send out cards for birthdays for. Like years? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 But I yeah. Just, I didn't know if it was like the first year. Yeah. Oh no no no. It's been years. years. Okay. So so uh, in a, within the last year because we've been hanging out with Chip, um, and he's been showing us other things to do. That's like this year is where we've implemented bigger group sends and like the A list, like the Mother's Day card, I'll send to our A list mm -hmm. clients. Right. So I have to go through like through the list. Yeah. How they're all to mothers. See who who. Is the mother exactly? You're not gonna send. So you don't get offended, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because I received a Father's Day card. <laughs> okay, come on. Right. So so <laughs> it is it, almost. It it yeah, takes work. Absolutely right. Strange. It takes work, and you don't want a single woman to get a Mother's Day card. I mean, yeah. come on, that's just that's silly. Yeah. So it's all about you know bringing it back and, and, and relationship building, which is. Uh, we think for percent of cards, that's the biggest advantage. Mm -hmm. Do that one on one. Um, do that one on one. The, the, it's the personal one. Mm -hmm. So uh, right after we're done this client party, uh, end of September, we're going to sit down. We're going to figure out all our events for 2020. Uh, I don't know that we're going to do 12. Um, we're probably at least 10. Right. Right? So that they're not all like big and massive. Mm -hmm. Like the party, the client party, we always do it at the Saturday after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. It's at a point where we just launch the plan, right? Because we have the e bites we have the postcards, we know who our caterer is, we know that we, it's, it's, it's a no brainer, right? Um, but everything else is going to need. Do you have that at your home? Yes. Who is on my house? Who needs people? Yeah, <laughs> it's people. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so that is where you do your house then? Yes. Cats want people. <laughs> yeah. Cats do want people. Um, so just one other thing, and this is, you know, part of what we do. This is the marketing as well. Send these around as well. Sorry, I got a little bit lost in my paper here. So um, the marketing plan, we also do that. I do uh, a quarter at a time. So in December, we plan January through March, and then by the beginning of March, plan the next quarter. What are we going to send to the farm? What are we sending to the database? What are we doing with our out of area agents? Because we stay in touch with them as well. Um, so again, that's all planned. So that when you get to the beginning of a month, you're not wondering what you're doing for marketing. You don't have to worry about that yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Making it all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But e everything is easier if you plan it ahead of time. Because then you don't have to think. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be frantic. <gasps> what am I doing? Right? Because you take the time. Oh. Taking the time weekly Sunday nights is when I do my weeks my weeks plan so that I can wake mm -hmm. up Monday morning and and you know have a clear vision. Um, I do a lot of my admin Friday afternoons. So Fridays from two to four. That's when I'll work on my big projects, um, and I'll, that's when I do the prioritization of the Friday list. You guys were probably wondering what I meant by Friday list. Um, I, I sit at my computer for the majority of the day on Friday and just work on the things that I don't want to work on during the week that take um, take any time away from my lead general, my relationship building. Right? So I kind of have a bit of a list on Friday and then Sunday night I'll finalize it. So that Monday morning, we're off and running, right? So you're not thinking about who am I calling, what are we doing, all that stuff. Yeah. So that's not even in my schedule anymore because it's just a given that that's what I do. Right. Anything we haven't covered? Anything else that's burning? I actually have minutes over time, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's what happens when we chat. Um, I'm happy to send all these charts around for you guys if you want. Yeah. Would help. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you the soft copies so that you can you can manipulate them to what you want. There's just one I wanted to look at, the one that you just have your goals on there. The annual? Uh, or, or, or the 411. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to take a look at that one. Does somebody have it? <laughs> nope, it's right here. Okay, thank you.
Thanks, guys. If you need Thank you. 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 Thank you.